Thanks to the support as a channel member, Ollie Collins. Oh, well, here we go then, boys and girls. Part one of the job, kind of done. We've got to back where they should have been if it hadn't have been for all the financial silliness. The real road to glory begins now because we've got to move them up beyond where they ever were before. Remember, we've got that whole trying to surpass Paris Saint-Germain thing ticking away in the background. Hello, I'm to part 10 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special at the end of season two of the save. I don't think I've ever made it for the second transfer special inside 10 episodes before. I hope those of you who don't enjoy constant winning appreciate the fact we've raced through to this point and having a, having a look at how things are, I think it's going to get a little bit trickier from here. So we need a big summer. We need a good summer. But first, let's review the season we've just had. We did win the league. We left it on a semi-cliffhanger yesterday where it wasn't completely rubber-stamped, but we were all but there. And obviously we did end up going over the finish line. Um, our signing of the season was Yad Lokorofo. As you would expect, came in on a free transfer. Still only 19 years old. 23 goals from 22 appearances, eight assists as well, and a 7.81. Um, he surpassed both Big Fat Dennis and Salah Buzrara, who were the star men from the year before, over 100 goals between them. I think Locker Ofo is probably the one of all of them who's most likely to lead us up the rest of the leagues. And I guess because of that, Sidney Niang, who came in, never really got an opportunity to play a game, and he's now retiring. Um, Results-wise... Um, I don't know why it only looks at the French Cup on this screen. It's a little bit of a glitch. Um, we we won the league. There you go. We we did win the league. Uh, we had an 8-0 win at one point as well, and a 7-0 win. What a wonderful thing. And then this is the area we very much need to keep an eye on because it's the big worry for us going forward, the finances. We're still a one-and-a-half-star reputation club. That's becoming less significant the further up the league pyramid that we move, obviously, in tier six as a one and a half star club, surrounded by half star clubs, we had the pick of the players. We are now reaching a level where we're kind of equivalent to the other clubs at this level. Um, and it's more of a level playing field. The thing that will stop it being a level playing field, at least in the short term, is we still have this big pile of sponsorship money. Or at least we did this season just gone. We'll need to check if we're still going to have that amount of sponsorship money this coming season because those sponsor deals are coming to an end, and I don't expect them to be renewed at the same high level as they were before. All the other financial stuff is down because we didn't have as much of a cup run. We didn't have the secondary cup to play in, so all of that stuff. We we ultimately, we played far fewer games. So, it. Uh, well, I mean, look at it. Without the sponsorship money, there's basically zero income at this club. It's terrifying. Um, we did sell some shirts, though. Locker Ofo selling more than anybody else, and this was our team of the season when we get there. We see the team, team. We see the team of the season. There we go. Team of the season is Goda in goal. You know this eleven. I know this eleven very well. Um, Amimi Bahanga, uh, Camera and Temi Toppy, Brian Dumas, Peron and Jean Marie, and then Lockerofo and Buzrara. Um, as you can see, Buzrara did push uh, Lockerofo pretty close when it came to goals. They both had very very good seasons, and these are our awards for the year. So. Lockerofo doing a similar clean sweep to what Buzrara did the year before, winning Fans Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, signing of the season, goal of the season went to Peron, top scorer was Lockerofo, most assists, I think for the second year in a row is Brian, um, Lockerofo, most man of the matches and highest average rating. Uh, we didn't get any of the competition awards though, but we have set some club records. Dumas, worst discipline, he is a rascal and probably look, someone we're going to be looking to move on. He's a bit of a liability. Both of those red cards were in big games against teams up there in the top three, top four with us. So um, he's not only a liability, he's a liability in big matches. Uh, big Fat Dennis is our all-time record goal scorer, apparently, with 66 goals. This is a club Olivia Giroud played for. There's your confirmation that Big Fat Dennis, better than Olivia Giroud. Um, Ibrahim Diallo set the record for our new youngest player, one that he's probably going to be tough to beat for a while if all of the leagues have this you have to be 16 to play rule. David Carter was actually younger and I tried to play him and wasn't allowed to. Um, but we need someone who's pretty much playing for us on their 16th birthday to break that record. And likewise, Sidi Niang at 35, nearly 36 years old. We're not going to have a player older than that anytime soon as we 
really focus in on the youngsters. Big Fat Dennis scored a goal inside 19 seconds to grab himself another club record. Diallo, youngest goal scorer as well as youngest player. And Niang, oldest goal scorer as well as oldest player. We're, we're doing it all this year. There's your final league table. We did end up top of the league, six points clear of Vigneul in the end, who are the team that finished second. They also finished second last year. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to keep things going and follow us up the leagues again. Um, but the other league table I want to show you as well um, is our B team. Because our B... No, not the affiliate clubs. We want actual Tour 2 uh, because they won the league that we won last year. Um, and they won it as easily as we did without taking a defeat. You can see Gerald Lottis, the youngster that we looked at an episode or two ago, scoring 30 goals. Um, but it is quite fun um, to see that we were the winners last year. And then this year, it's Tour 2. Is our B team going to follow us up the leagues? Because I would absolutely love that. Uh, the B team is dominated and it is wonderful to see. Um, right, let's have a look through the other stuff that we've got on here. There's your all-time best 11. It's got a very familiar look around it at the moment. It is a disgrace that Big Fat Dennis isn't in the all-time best 11, but I guess Lockerofo arrived too early and those two are going to be together for a while. I don't imagine we're going to break that strike partnership up this coming season. Interesting to see Tyson in there, um, who, of course, moved on last summer. And he's probably... I wonder if he's starting to regret it yet. Because we're going places and he's probably not. And he would have been very much a part of that, but not anymore. He's not welcome back. He turned on us. Right, the club are looking for us to finish in the top half of National 2 this season. That's what I mean about our reputation now starting to level out with the leagues that we're playing in. The last two years, we've been expected to win. Now it's like, yeah, well, if you can finish mid-table for the next five years, that's quite good. So... It becomes trickier from here, I think, especially when they want me to play attacking, counter-attacking, direct, entertaining football that makes the most of set pieces. So all the football. They could just the club culture is, yes, basically, from what I can see there. We'll accept that. Why not? We'll, we love a challenge. Team leaders are Goda and Big Fat Dennis. Um, that is our best team for next year, supposedly. Obviously, there's going to be players being brought in as part of that. Interesting to see. Um, that Kingsley Gotan, who's still only 17 years old and only played nine games for us this year, but was great. He'd actually broke, he was my starting left winger by the end of the season ahead of Brian and is another one off the very early stages of the conveyor belt. Uh, but the other big piece of news, which I actually got before the season ended, is our budgets for the year. And they make me look like less of a maniac than we looked before. I mean, that we ain't looking at. That is, that is a, an ongoing issue. Um, that hopefully is going to be solved by sponsors. We'll check them in a moment. But despite this, this board with a reputation for financial mismanagement have given me a transfer budget, £114,000, plus they've doubled the wage budget. So, or more than doubled it. Our budget last year, I think, was 8000 We were spending about ten and a half, and they've now put it up to twenty one and a half. So we're way under. We can, we can give everyone pay rises and bring in some nice new talent as well and still be absolutely fine. Fine with a big asterisk because of this. What's the deal with the sponsors? So it's 2023 now. We are in... Yeah, this one we're not getting back. The general sponsorship. That's £450,000 of a sponsorship we're losing unless we get a new one in. And then another, so that's our biggest sponsor. And then another 215,000, it's the final year of. The rest of them, we're good for a little while. So about half of that 1.2 million, we're going to have, hopefully, until we're at the point to be able to get equivalent deals in, in the future. These two, we're going to have to learn to live without, and we are already hemorrhaging money. Oh, imagine if we go back into administration. Oh, I'll be so upset if we go back into administration. Um, right. This is the squad. It's quite large. We promoted a lot more young players uh, towards the end of the season because I was playing them in the last couple of games after we'd already secured promotion. So job number one is to get rid of some of the some of this nonsense that we don't really need. I don't know why they're showing as unknown. You can't see it's behind my head. The lone players no longer have star ratings, but they're all leaving anyway. Um, but the older players, the likes of Niang, Combo, um, even someone like Dennis 
potentially. He's two and a half star, three star. That's someone we could probably move on. Um, anyone who's a little bit older and not a regular star, and Wimber, Beban, we need to clear them out of the way to make room for the young players because the young players are the, are the future of this football club. Um, Stephen Boyd has officially declared himself for Italy despite the fact that he doesn't speak fluent Italian. He speaks fluent French and was born in France. But he's at the under-20 World Cup with Italy. He is. He's our best young player. Um, he will be a starter next year. Michael Oliver, likewise, has now been capped for Portugal, despite being born in France. He's off to play for Portugal. Uh, David Carter actually is French, hasn't had any caps yet. Another one who's born in Tour. What a generation of players born in this little town that doesn't like football. As you can see, David Carter's wanted by some bigger clubs. And that's going to be the problem that we have with a lot of our better players. Locker Ofo wanted by some bigger clubs. Um, so we need to we need to be wary of that, that all our five-star potential players are drawing interest. Hope that we don't sell them. If we do, hope we get big money to solve that problem. I think we are going to have to sell to buy on the way up this league pyramid um, and try and do some sensible transfers to plug the gaps and put together a squad capable of being competitive in this league. The one taste of this league that we got in the season just gone was in the cup when we played against um, this lot, Semprive Senhilaire, who we lost to on penalties. They ultimately ended up finishing 10th in the league, not a million miles north of relegation. So it's going to be a challenging season. More games as well, a 16-team league up to a 30-game season. We need, to, we need to put together a good squad to the 1st of January, July even. I messed up the bit. Roddy Howie's off to play with Scotland again. Lovely stuff. Well, that told me. It looks like we've had the big sponsorship deal has been extended and increased. Yeah, the one that was 450 with a year to go is now 500 with three years to go. Money, 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 money. Look, we've got a positive balance after all that money flowing in. Lovely old stuff. That's still terrifying. But that does make things a little bit less stressful this summer. We can even do a scouting package. Oh, the things we're able to do with a little bit of money behind us. Lovely. It is the 1st of July, but before we get into free transfers, we've actually bought a player, Johan Ella Ella is a 26-year-old winger that we've just spent £6.75,000 on to bring him in from Belgium. Very fancy. Um, he is French. We are sticking to the maintaining, looking for French or homegrown uh, players. He's 26 years old. He's a right winger, and he is better than what we already had. He's going to be awesome. He is in. Let's welcome him along, shall we? Um, while that's been going on, there is lots of transfer stuff ticking away in the background, we are struggling to keep hold of some of our key players. Uh, Yad Lokorofo, uh, we've turned down an offer for him from Nancy, um, and we've had to agree with him. He got in a grumpy. We've had to agree with him that if anyone offers £75,000, we'll let him leave. It's such a low fee, but we're in tier four. I guess it's just the way it is. Um, he's out of contract at the end of the season. He won't discuss a new one. Um, so we're kind of stuck in a situation where I'm happy if we can if we can keep him happy with no one hitting that. I don't mind him staying here for another year and leaving on a free transfer. because I think we get value out of him being here for another year. But if someone meets that, we'll let him go because we've agreed we'll let him go. Likewise, Gerald Lottis, who would be the natural successor to him, is also under offer. Uh, Nancy came in for him, offered like twenty thousand. It's the same team after both of our young strikers. Um, we managed to turn that down. He's not in a grumpy yet. I'm probably going to send him out on loan because if we've got Big Fat Dennis, Buzrara, Lokorofo all actually here as a two-star player, um, he's not actually going to get a lot of game time. So if he can go out on loan and rattle in the goals again, like he did for our B team last year, I mean, what a season that is. Um, I think some games will do him the world of good and hopefully keep him out of the way of clubs looking to bring him in on a transfer. David Carter, we've turned down offers for as well. Um, we have actually signed a player in addition to Ella Ella. Uh, we brought in Hugo Huriz, um, who was supposed to be the Locker replacement. He was scouted as three-star current ability, five-star potential. 
But either my scouts or my coaches are bobbins, and he's actually that. He's 23 years old. It, it's not ideal. It's really not. I mean, he got 10 goals last year in, re, in Regional 1. Compare that to Lutis playing at the same level. He got 47 goals. Probably need to be back in our own youngster there, don't we? Rather than bringing in this guy on quite a lot of money. £675,000 a week. I broke my own rule. Usually, if a player comes to me and asks to be a fringe player, usually that rules them out. But I figured, you know what? He's six foot two. He's quite young. He's got loads of potential. But no. Should have stuck to my guns. So budget-wise, we've still got plenty of budget to play with as we hit the 1st of July, free transfer day. Um, some of our loans have now moved on. We've extended the loans of Buhanga and Tabush, um, who are going to be with us for another year. We're actually having to pay a little bit of money for them this time uh, in wage contributions, but really low wage contributions. So those two will stick around. But we have thinned the squad out a little bit with some of those loans leaving um, and we've offered some new contracts as well. So you can see Buzrara has had a big pay rise. Ella Ella's on quite a lot of money as well. Curie's is the third highest paid player at the club. And some of these other guys are getting contract extensions as well, in particular the young players as we try and tie them down. But it's now free transfer time. Let's see what we can find. In fact, on that note, I don't think I've discussed how I go about finding free transfers yet on this series. It's usually the same kind of process, but people always ask, if you are new, this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to go to my director of football and I'm going to ask him what free transfers he's got for me in pretty much every position um, and just get a nice list of him. These are usually pretty high quality free transfers. So I'm going to get all them, bring all them in on trial, have a look at them. The other thing I'm going to do is go to my um, scouted players and look for any of these that are unattached players that have already been scouted that have got a decent scout recommendation or a decent current ability. What I'm not going to do is go and trawl through the big clubs, trawl through the big leagues and offer trials to everybody and do it that way because it just becomes a little bit too easy there. So we're still using some of the non-league, well, all the non-league to legend rules, really. The only one we've not brought over from non-league to legend into this series is the whole moving clubs thing because we ain't moving clubs. It's called tour, but we're not on tour. But with Tor, all the way. Yeah, let's get some free transfers in. Have a look to see what we've got. And make sure we don't go over budget this time. That would be, be good, won't it, if we manage to not go over budget this time. Ooh, a 19-year-old striker. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's not ideal, is it? 81. We managed to get them up to 81,000 with a 25% sell-on. So it's actually more than we'd agreed with him that he would be getting, but uh, we got one year of Yad Lokorofo before he is headed up to the second tier, which is probably more realistically the level that he should be at. So, unfortunately, he has moved on, but we have brought in some free transfers. So, we've kind of already replaced him. We knew he was going, and the replacement has been made. In fact, as well as him going, there's a few other of the more established guys have moved on as well, as we have a little bit of a clear out to prepare ourselves for the higher level. So Brian has gone to play in Luxembourg. He's earning 1.3k a week to play in Luxembourg. He went on a free transfer. Like I say, Goten had replaced him in the team. So while his value is high, get him moved on for free. Uh, Dennis has gone to Bastia for 17,000. Um, Wimbia, who has been a reserve for a little while now, and we've just signed Ella Ella. Um, we got 13,000 for him. And of course, the 81,000 for Yad. 115,000 on its way into the club to go on top of the 100,000 or so we already had to spend. So we've we've had a, a few players come in and there will be more to come. Although we've spent a lot of our wage budget, we're going to have to convert the majority. In fact, we are just about maxed out on wage budget. We have to convert the majority of that into wages. So we could probably bring in one or two more players and then it's loan o'clock. Um, but we have Jules Godin, who is a central midfield player, 23 years old, can play anywhere up the middle. We're obviously going to be using him in central midfield where he is at his best. He's a three and a half star current ability player, better than any other uh, midfielder we've got at the club. For some reason, the comparison is with strikers. Um, I don't even know if you can see that behind my head, but he is better than any other uh, midfielder at the club. He was playing for Guignamp last year, who, interestingly, that's where Yad has gone. He was actually playing for their B team down in the National 2. I say down in the National 2. That's the league we're playing in this year. So he played a full season 
um, average of 7.01, and he is now a tour player. Gabriel Tutu, I looked at him before, 19-year-old striker, was always going to have a little bit of this. Um, three and a half star current ability, five star potential. Um, he is he is as good as anyone we've got at the club with potential to improve. Very much the uh, very much the locker row replacement, or one of the two we brought in to replace him. Um, he played 18 games in the league above us last year for US Oleon. Um, he's never really been hammering in the goals, but I think now is his time. He's still only 19 after all. Um, the other new striker we've got is Tio Her. He's a 22-year-old French striker. Um, he was playing in 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 Luxembourg. He's basically swapped countries with Wimber. I think that's probably how it works. One in, one out. Um, was scoring goals over in Luxembourg and is now in to compete up front for us. Johan Barrett is a centre-back, 22-year-old, Ivorian under-23 international, three-and-a-half star current ability, um, who was playing, again, in this league last year, albeit not loads of football but before that had been playing the league above and played a lot more then so i'm assuming injuries i don't want to check and then mohammed fafana is a new young goalkeeper not intended to replace goda but just to have a goalkeeper with a little bit of potential at the club um 19 years old and he will sit on our bench so with all of those ins and outs we end up with a squad of 24 players uh, probably with some weird yeah, I was going to say some weird bits of strength and not strength. Our left-hand side is looking noticeably quite weak. Um, obviously, Gotan is there with potential to improve, so we're happy to start him, but we only have the one guy behind him, um, Unkuka, who was playing for our B team uh, last year and has now moved up into our first-team squad um, after he... I was going to say after... I guess the B team signed him? Because it looks like there was no signing there. Maybe I... Maybe I signed him last summer and forgot. Um, and then at left back, we've only really got Amimi, who's been our right back um, for a little while. And then we've got Michael Oliver, who can play either side, Stephen Boyd. We need fullbacks and a left winger. Central midfield, we've actually given Dumas and Peron new contracts after saying we wouldn't. But with those two, Godan and Diallo, I think we're good for central midfield. And obviously, Tabush is here on loan again for the season. Centre back, we've got Barrett, Camera, Boyd, Buhanga. We're fine there. Goda and the youngsters in goal were fine there. Um, Ella on the right-hand side with Costas able to play either side. And Gotan as well. We're good there. And up front, we are. Even after losing our best player up front, we have a lot of very good strikers. Buzrara, Her, Tutu, Big Fat Dennis. And we've still got the youngster um, whose name I always forget who we're loaning out. What's his name? Uh, Lotis. Um, he's going out on loan for the season, but he is still knocking around at the club as well. We have... A lot of very good young players. Let's just check in at the development centre, see if we've got any fullbacks or left wingers we could maybe draft in. Um, Fafana needs moving up into the first team. That's what we've signed him to do. Gabriel Fournier is a left back. Well, what do you know? Get up into the first team, young man. Um, we might as well just move all these up into the first team. Um, Abdul Cisse played a bit in the first team last year as well. Um, and then Oliver Vaquero is another central midfielder get them all up into the first team it bloats the squad out a little bit again um, but there's still players that we can move on fringe players that we're just not really going to use obviously Latisse is going to be heading out on loan we're not going to be getting rid of any of these youngsters and a chunk of these will move back down into the B team once I've decided what the squad is um, but I'm looking at the likes of camera and thinking could we maybe get rid of you do we need you with all the young players we've got coming through who can play centre back um, the media, while all this is going on, the media think we're going to win the league. They've changed their tune. I mean, we've only got one player in the Dream 11 this year, so it's a little bit of a different situation. Barrett is in there in the Dream 11. Uh, Buzrara and Ella Ella are two of the best players in the league. But, yeah, apparently, favourites for promotion. It's not what the board are looking for. They're just looking for top, top half. It's all very confusing. Right. Let's shuffle some money around. Um, yeah, we'll just move the whole lot over. Probably going to need to move some back for signing on fees. And for proper first team quality, we can probably bring in one, maybe two more players and then cheapo loans. I wonder if we'll actually be able to get him off Monaco this summer. Um, we looked at them last year. I don't even think I did it on camera and there was just no one who wanted to come to us. Um, I guess... 
maybe their B team or third team. How do you do that team report thing that all you rascals who do team reports do? I know that's a thing you can do. I don't remember, I don't know how to, oh, there you go, team report. Get team report. Just can we have one for each of the squads, please? Because I assume we can take players out of the second team and third team as well. We'll get the same guy to do them all. And then maybe, I guess we'll do the under-19s as well. See if we can grab some uh, some freebies from Monaco, who I guess they've got a reasonable record of bringing through half-decent young players. Right, here we go. Two more players in. They're expensive. Uh, we've, we've got no money left now. It is just free loans to fill up the rest of the squad. Well, the squad is full. Nathan Tannard, 26-year-old left back. Um, he's costing us 1.2k a week, three and a half star current ability. Comes in from Goal FC. That's the same team we signed Lockero Foe from. So hopefully he'll be as good as him. And then Ben, Ran ben Randy Abdella is a 24 year old right back, right wing back. Look at that value. We've not got a player of a value like that anywhere at the club outside of him. Three and a half star current ability. He comes in from Troy. No, uh, those like Lusitanos Senwa. Um, he was playing at this level last year is the important thing. So the squad is now, as far as permanent players go, that, that's it. That's your lot. They're our boys. And uh, now we just probably need, I think we do need one more left winger in the squad. Although Costas can play over there at an absolute push. Um, but we'll look to do that on loans because we don't really have any loans yet. Apart from the two that were already here, Buhanga and Tabush. Um, but we had quite a lot of loans last year. Um, so a few of these boys, quite a lot of them, are going to be pushed back down into the B team as we get started up on the season, get some game time into them. Lotis has gone out on loan. He's going to be playing in the division below this year. So in fact, we can move him straight into the B team squad just to get him out of the way in this first team squad. These trialists can all go as well. And we can get an idea of actually how many players we've got. But I think it's like a 30-man squad. So... We do still uh, we do still have a few players who are going to be making their way back down to the B team. Um, let's have a look. So I think it is a 30-man squad. 30 men. We still need another left winger. We've got four goalkeepers, for goodness sake. There's probably some fat we could trim here. Well, we squeezed a, we squeezed a loan in, just the one loan for now. And he is off of Monaco. We're finally abusing our parent club. Nazim Babai um, is a 20-year-old winger, can play on either side. Because he's off our parent club, of course, he's not costing us anything, which is wonderful. He was playing for, he's played between the second and third teams at Monaco for the last few years. Uh, last year was playing in the second team, which is at the level that we're at now. So got plenty of experience at this level and plugs that gap in the squad that we had. So this is the squad that we're going into the new season with. Like I said before, a few of these will end up moving back down to the B team. Um, probably before, I don't know if there's a registration thing or if we can just move them freely between the two squads. I'll look into it. But certainly before final squad registrations, we'll make sure that we're settled on like a 25 probably. But I think we've got decent depth throughout the team. We do still look a little bit weak on that left-hand side, but... I'm banking on Goten getting really, really good. So I, I, I assume he's going to get better. Likewise, Tanad on this side. Um, Goda starting to look like he might be the weak link in the team, which is a little bit of a shame. He's announced his retirement from international football this summer um, at 34 and with three caps. I bet Cameroon were gutted. Uh, but he is going to be our starting keeper again for this season. And... Uh, I just think we're going to outscore the opposition because we've still got all these wonderful strikers. Big Fat Dennis is still one of the best players at the club and he's only our fourth best striker. So we are very front heavy. This is likely to be the team that starts the new season. Big Fat Dennis has got an injury and um, so it's very easy to go with the two new boys up top. And other than that, it's a very familiar looking team. So fingers crossed we start well and uh, take the league by storm. And of course, that will be in Monday's episode, we've not got anyone in the Dream 11 now. Rubbish. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back on Monday. We've got the network game coming out over the weekend. But remember, Monday to Friday schedule. I need to come up with something to do on Saturdays. Let me know. Ideas down in the comments. What can we do on Saturdays? Don't say more of this. Oh, goodness me. If you have enjoyed that, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. 
subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.